It is Flag Day. It is also Game 3 of a three-game series between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox baseball. There have not been many positives this year for the Red Sox, but certainly one is Eduardo Rodriguez, and today he makes his fourth start. Well, that's the one thing the Red Sox uh, and fans are certainly looking forward to, watching him pitch, and he has been outstanding throughout his first three games. The graphic speaks for itself, but he's the first pitcher in Major League history with six-plus innings and allowing no more than three hits or one run in first three career starts. Now, the last time out against Baltimore, I actually thought was his worst outing, and it was very good. I thought that all he had brought to the table that day was a very good fastball. Didn't have his slider or changeup like he did in his first two starts, and he's going to need all three of those against this lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays because we know how good they are. But it is exciting to watch him pitch. He's so composed. Uh, nothing seems to flatter him at all on the mound, you know, get him rattled or anything like that, and uh, he's got his work cut out for him today against a very good lineup. Red Sox trying to salvage the last game of this three-game series. Beautiful weather here in Boston. We're back with the first pitch right after this. Experience the new Audi A3 today. Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. Toyota's website for deals by a Toyota.com. DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of your Boston Red Sox. Nissan, get to Nissan's ride of your life for exciting performance and bonus cash. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at Southwest.com. New Hampshire Day from Fenway Park, the Granite State, celebrated here as the Red Sox and Blue Jays wrap up their three-game series. Red Sox have taken the field. It is junior announcer day, so let's get the Blue Jays starting lineup. It's brought to you by your New England Chevy dealers. 
Thanks, Mr. Orsillo. Hi, I'm Brenna from Guilford, New Hampshire. Leading off for the Blue Jays, the shortstop, Jose Reyes. The third baseman, Josh Donaldson. And right field, Jose Batista. The DH, Edwin Encarnacion. The first baseman, Chris Colabello. The catcher, Russell Martin. And left field, Danny Valencia. And center field, Kevin Pillar. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Ryan Goings. Nice job, Brenna. On the mound today for the Red Sox as the Red Sox starting pitcher is presented by your local New England Audi dealers. Here's Eduardo Rodriguez. His fourth start in the major leagues comes in at 2-0 and with a 0.44 earned run average, 20 and two-thirds innings, 21 strikeouts in those 20 and two-thirds. He has given up eight hits, seven walks, and opponents hitting at just 116 against Rodriguez. Against his old organization last time out at Baltimore, six shutout innings, striking out three along the way. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They have ninth in the league with 38 errors on the season. Pablo Sandoval at third base. Santa Bogots to shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second. Brock Holt, the first baseman. Left to right, Hanley Ramirez, Ruzne Castillo, Alejandro Deaza, and Blake Swihart doing the catching for Rodriguez. Well, Jose Reyes standing in here for the Blue Jays to get it started. And the first pitch of the ball game from Rodriguez he is up and away for ball one. Jose Reyes hitting at 296, two homers and 20 runs batted in. Jerry, last time out, he did not appear to have as an effective outing, although you look at the numbers, you wouldn't know it, but it didn't appear to be as good as the first two. Yeah, the numbers are very good. There's no question about that. I just thought that in that game, he had a little trouble with his slider and his changeup. And there you see the breakdown for Rodriguez, 75% fastballs. Popped up, out goes Pedroia to the short lawn and right, and he'll make the catch for the game's first out. Well, today's umpires are brought to you by Buick. Experience the new Buick lineup during this year's sign and drive. So your local Buick dealer today. Alan Porter has a plate. Mark Rippinger is at first base. Jeff Kellogg is the crew chief. And Brian Onora is the umpire at third. One down here in the first inning for Josh Donaldson. Great numbers for Donaldson so far in the season. 316, 17 homers and 45 runs batted in. Donaldson starting today sixth in the American League in batting average. Tied for second in home runs. And second in RBIs only to Mark Teixeira. With his 46 RBI setting the pace in the American League. And of course the Blue Jays facing Rodriguez for the first time. And a four pitch walk so down to first base goes Donaldson with one out in the inning. We're available this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. When it's tardes amigos. What a beautiful day here today at Fenway Park a degree warmer than yesterday 72 degrees today breeze in from center at 12 miles per hour and the forecast partly cloudy for the remainder of the game is. Right now lots of sunshine on the field as. Jose Batista, first pitch swinging, fouls it off to the right out of play. All three starts that uh, Rodriguez has had for the Red Sox, he's had seven strikeouts in each one of the three. On the ground up the middle, Pedroia to the backhand, tags second, throws to first, double play. Blue Jays don't score in the top of the first. Red Sox are coming up.
brought to you by your Eastern Hyundai dealers. Thanks, Mr. Osillo. Hi, I'm Kyle from Salem, New Hampshire. Leading off for the Red Sox. The second baseman, Dustin Pedroia. The first baseman, Brock Holt. In left field, Henry Ramirez. The DH, David Ortiz. The shortstop, Xander Bogart. The third baseman, Pablo Sandoval. In right field, Ad- Adrian Diaz. In, in center field, Rusty Castillo. In batting ninth, the catcher, Blake Swihart. Nice job, Kyle, as this is Dustin Pedroia lining this into center field. A ringing single to begin the day. And the Blue Jays' starting pitcher is presented by New England Nissan dealers. Marco Estrada makes his 14th appearance, 8th start, 3-3 three and three with a 3.7 ADRA. 44 strikeouts, 16 walks, and opponents hitting a 234 against Estrada. Monday, a win against Miami, seven innings, giving up three runs. Didn't walk anybody and struck out six. Part of this uh, largely improved starting rotation for the Toronto Blue Jays. Lead runner on for the Red Sox. Here is Brock Holt. And a fly ball out to center field. Kevin Pillar. He'll make the catch. As bluffing at first base is Pedroia, one down. Now the Blue Jays defense is brought to you by DraftKings, and they are fifth in the American League, 34 errors on the season. Josh Donaldson at third base, Jose Reyes the shortstop, Ryan Goins at second, and Chris Calabello at first base. Left to right, Danny Valencia, Kevin Pilar, and Jose Batista, and Russell Martin doing the catching for Estrada. One down, one on, and Hanley Ramirez coming up. Henley batting in the three spot today. Take it all the way, and he will take a ball. I guess he was taking it all the way. He was back, yeah. backing out of the batter's box <laughs> as the pitch was coming in. Pedroia with a short lead at first, held on by Colabello. Ramirez taking again, and it's away, 2-0. and oh. Fastball, curveball, and a changeup uh, from Estrada today. Look at the arsenal for Estrada this season so far. A lot of changeups. That's his go-to pitch when he's in trouble. In the air, foul ground, heading over his Donaldson as far as he can go, but it's well back into the seats. And that was the change up right there to Hanley Ramirez. Hanley out in front of it. Well, that's 15 games for Hanley Ramirez, hitting at 345. Three home runs in his last 15 games as well. And so far in the series, two for five. Looks like they're trying to come inside on Hanley. Too far inside. Three balls and a strike to Ramirez. And one number that kind of sticks out for Estrada is given up 33 home runs over his last 25 starts. Now low ball four and he walks Hanley. So the first walk passed out here by Estrada. Two on one away in this Boston first inning. Here comes Big Poppy David Ortiz. Well, David yesterday able to tie the game with a home run, a leadoff home run in the sixth inning. He's had two home runs in his last three games. And is up to eight home runs on the year. To go along with 25 RBIs, a 226 average. 
into the ship, but they keep it tight to the infield with the double play possibilities here for the Blue Jays. Well, the home run yesterday that tied the score for a side. Murray Dickey allowing that home run, and of course the Red Sox will go on to lose yesterday's game in 11 innings. Also, Martin's home run in the top half of the 11th, the difference. Two and oh. David Ortiz sitting on 474 home runs. One behind Stan Musial and Willie Stargell. Jose Reyes coming in from shortstop to. Say something to Estrada briefly. It seems as if Estrada has been behind here for the most part of all the Red Sox hitters here in the first inning. Outside again, and it is three and zero. Oh. And you see the difference in uh, the pace of both uh, Rodriguez and Estrada. Rodriguez works very quickly. Estrada very deliberate on the mound. Xander Bogart's on deck. One down here in the Boston first inning. And there's ball four. Back to back. Four pitch walks. Base is loaded here for the Red Sox, and they got to cash in here on Estrada in the first inning. Yeah, these are the opportunities when presented to have to be cashed in on. It's been too many times the Red Sox have had these situations where they have not been able to put together a big inning. Look at the seventh inning yesterday. Had the bases loaded, one out in a tie game, could not get the go-ahead run across. And here they are in the first inning with the bases loaded, one out. Here is Xander Bogarts. 295 to start the day with two homers and 24 runs batted in. Bogart's three for 10 so far in the series and coming in now with a nine game hitting streak. And being patient with Estrada and so far it's working. Yeah, no walks in his last outing against Miami in seven innings. Nine straight balls here. And as you saw, just four strikes of the 14 pitches that he has thrown to this point. There's a strike, and it's one and one. A fastball right now at about 89 to 90 miles an hour. See the graphic on Bogarts. Leading hitter with runners in scoring position for the Red Sox. Pedroia at third, Ramirez at second, Ortiz at first, one down. Foul back, and it's one and two. Well, we talked about bases loaded situations, and the Red Sox had one yesterday in the ball game, and two big strikeouts, one to Ortiz. One to Bogots and the Red Sox left them uh, stranded. Fired up Liam Hendricks getting out of that jam. Bogarts fouls it back and out of play. Everything on that outside corner. Pablo Sandoval back in the lineup today had some quad tightness yesterday, but to back in the Red Sox lineup today. One two pitch again to Bogarts. Xander lines it to third and this will be two and again the Red Sox in a bases loaded one out situation come away with nothing.
scoreless as we head to the second inning as Edwin Encarnacion, Chris Calabello, and Russell Martin featured in the second inning as Encarnacion, the DH again today. 232, 13 homers and 36 runs batted in. Both teams now have turned to double play. This one fouled back, and it's two and two. Uh, you know, you make you do everything you can offensively. You make good, solid contact as Bogarts did, but then it's out of your control, and the line drive goes right to Donaldson, to second base to get the double play and get the Blue Jays out of a possible big inning. All you can hope for in those situations, you put a good at bat out there, and certainly Bogarts did hit the ball very hard on a changeup, but right at the third baseman. Fly ball to right field, sending Deaza over. And Alejandro puts it away for the first out. Let's check in with Tom Karen, TC. Yeah, Don, we've all seen what Eduardo Rodriguez has done on the mound for the Red Sox. This now his fourth start in his first three. He's done something no pitcher's ever done in the modern era. Gone six or more innings, keeping opponents to one or fewer runs, three or fewer hits. But it's amazing how quickly he has come this far. The Sea Dogs today playing their 63rd game in Bowie. Last year, when they played their 63rd game against Bowie, Mike Antonellis, the Sea Dogs radio broadcaster, telling us Eduardo Rodriguez pitched against Portland in that game. Six and a third innings, two runs scored. It was a 5 4 win for the Sea Dogs in that game. Blake Swihart went 0 for 4. Now, Blake Swihart catching Eduardo Rodriguez has both made a very quick move up the organization here to the majors. Don? It was a fly ball to center field as Castillo started back now comes in and Colabello retired two down in the inning. Well, it has been a pretty speedy track here to the majors for Rodriguez and you heard from so many of the experts during the trade deadline time that the Red Sox did really well in the Andrew Miller deal and at the time you're thinking well it's a guy that's a prospect but now we're seeing what some of those experts were talking about at the time of the trade. Well we got a first hand taste of that when we were in Baltimore over the past week and we were talking to many people around the Baltimore organization and they all love this guy they absolutely did but they felt like they had to make the deal because they had a chance to go to postseason and they desperately needed somebody out of the bullpen they got a good one in Andrew Miller. But they also knew at the same time they were giving up a guy they didn't want to. Russell Martin, who is the hero of yesterday's game with a home run in the top half of the 11th inning, it was his 10th home run of the year. That's here, with two outs, bases empty. And is now ahead, two and one. That's the changeup right there at 87 miles an hour. It'll be 86, 87. Martin grounds one to Bogarts, gets a big high hop. Then it's a 1 2 3 second inning for Eduardo Rodriguez. No score from the fans.
commercial and industrial pumps for facilities throughout the Northeast. Did you know FW Web did that? Learn more about this proud Boston Red Sox sponsor at FWWeb.com. On to the bottom of the second inning, flag day. Fenway Park and scoreless to the bottom of the second. Six, seven, and eight coming up here for the Red Sox. Sandoval, Deaza, and Castillo to face Marco Estrada, who got in and out of trouble in the first inning. Red Sox had the bases loaded, but could not score. Xander Bogart's lining into a double play that ended that first inning. Now Sandoval jumping on the first pitch and fouling it off to the left. Sandoval getting to the ballpark early this morning, doing some running, doing some hitting to make sure that that uh, leg was okay. And then put in the lineup by John Farrell. Don Orsillo, Jerry Remy, Tom Karen with you from Fenway Park. Third and final game of this three game series between the Red Sox and the Blue Jays. And we're scoreless here in the bottom of the second. Sandoval fouls it off himself painfully. Run off the right inset in, in step. Got the padding there too, but that didn't seem to help very much. 417 the last three games for Pablo. Leads it off here in the home half of the second inning. Sandoval now with six home runs on the year. And a foul back keeps it one and two. Strata working very deliberately here today. 11 strikes of the first 22 pitches he has thrown. And this is into center field for Sandoval. Able to kind of hook it into center field. That's the second Red Sox hit of the day. Well, it's time to vote for your Red Sox All-Stars. Support your favorite Sox by voting on the 2015 Insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot at RedSox.com today. Make sure to vote early and often. Now Sandoval doing a very nice job. That was a changeup, and we've seen him do that so often where he's off balance on his front foot, but somehow keeps his hands back and drives it back up the middle for the base hit. Lead runner on here for the Red Sox second straight inning. One more look at that swing and watch all the weight come to that front foot but the hand stay back. He's able to reach out. I mean he hits pitches that are six seven inches off the outside part of the plate. Twenty fifth pitch coming up here for Estrada. And it is a called strike. As Deaza down 0 and 2. That's the changeup we were talking about right there. Deaza not chasing. Ball and two strikes to the Red Sox right fielder starting to settle in there in right field a little bit and back in there again today with Bruzne Castillo in center. John Farrell saying before the game they were going to have Mookie Betts take BP today to kind of get a feel for where he is in his recovery after his collision with the bullpen wall. And there is strike three. The Oz is not like it. It did appear to be a little bit outside for strikeout for Estrada. Well, again, those expanded uh, strike zones and Al Porter behind the plate today. When we've seen Al behind the plate, he generally has a fairly good sized strike zone. So when you get a couple of strikes with Al back there, you better be swinging. One on one down, Rusne Castillo at 242. The home run, five runs batted in. Three for nine in the series. Fouled off Russell Martin. Well, Martin had the long day yesterday having to catch R.A. Dickey. And uh, really had trouble catching him at times yesterday. Ended up being the hero though with the home run in the top half of the 11th inning. Dickey not part of the decision yesterday. 
Inside out, swing and a foul ball, 0 and 2. Ruznay has now made 17 starts since being recalled by the Red Sox on May the 22nd. His third start in center field. 14 have been in right field. Swing and a miss, and Estrada with back to back strikeouts. Two down. Well, here's today's Dunkin' Donuts poll question Should there be more home and home series? Text one for yes, text two for no. Text your answer to 536-536. Message and data rates may apply. One message per vote. Visit Nesson.com slash terms for terms and conditions as well as privacy policy. Well, so the Red Sox will be playing a home and home series coming up here for the Atlanta Braves. Two and two. And there for strike one to Blake Swihart. Do you have an opinion on that one, Don? I, I really don't. No, I don't either. I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't like it. I don't dislike it. It, it yeah, doesn't no, I, bother me. I, I, I I'll don't tell you this much, though. I'm not crazy about the two game series. No, I don't like the two game series. No. And one pitch is going to miss. Frame there by Martin. Well, uh, my partner here today has a bounce in his step because last yeah. night he went to a Dave Matthews concert. Outstanding. And he says it was very good. Very, very good. First time I had a chance to see Dave since uh, Toronto three years ago when we were on the road. So. 1-1 one, one pitch is a little bit high. 2-1. and one. I understand it's very tough, though, being down there as a celebrity that you are. You were just... Uh, People fine. were coming up to you all night long, taking pitches, tweeting pitches out. People were great last night. Had a yeah. great time. And... Uh, Sold out show as you might expect for Dave Matthews, even though you would not go. This one is fouled off to the left. And yes, they played more than three songs, which is what you're, no, you, you, <laughs> you see. You misunderstand. There are a couple of songs that I like, but oh, you, you do. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I, you know, I, I kid you about that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if I had a choice of concerts, it probably yeah. wouldn't be one that I would choose. Right. And, and that, right. that's nothing against uh, Dave at all. Pitch outside, full count. A little dicey there as the game was going on yesterday into the 11th inning as to whether or not I was going to get there. Yeah, he was sweating bullets. But it here. worked out, uh, unfortunately, on the wrong side of the score yesterday. Three-two pitch. Fly ball to left field as Valencia going back, dirt of the track, front of the wall to make the catch. It ends the second inning. We are through two. With no score from Fenway. The Easter Seals of New Hampshire and a part of the Impact Awards uh, for the Red Sox. Tell us a little bit about, uh, well, first of all, welcome to the booth. Well, thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about what the Easter Seals do for New Hampshire. So Easter Seals is a huge provider of services to people with disabilities across the state. We serve over 11,000 children, adults, and seniors in about 90 different programs. And tell us a little bit about the uh, program and what you guys got awarded with. Sure. So we um, we entered a contest online, yep. and we um, we have about 1,600 employees. So we pushed it out there, and we were very lucky to win a $10,000 gift um, and amazing seats today. And we really want to thank you so much. And there you are before the game on the field, yep. right? Presenting the check. Yes. We rely on donations like this to provide the services in our community. So it will go a long way for us. 
Yeah, Easter Seals, New Hampshire, here on this New Hampshire Day. So it's kind of worked out here as well to have it as part of New Hampshire Day at Fenway. Yes, we're New Hampshire residents as well, so this is very exciting to be here. We got to meet the governor before the game, which is just, just amazing. And um, again, this is just an incredible opportunity for us. First pitch here to Danny Valencia leading it off in the third inning. Visiting with Susan Silsby, Senior Vice President of Programs for Easter Seals of New Hampshire. And part of the Impact Awards, inspiring more philanthropy through cross uh, charities across New England. As this is to Short and Danny Valencia is retired. We thank you so much, Susan, for coming up and congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. One down here in the inning as Valencia is retired. And we'll bring up Kevin Pilar, who has started uh, every game in this series in center field for the Blue Jays. Hitting a 248 coming in for homers and 28 runs batted in. Even with the bag at third is Sandoval. Center fielder Ruzne Castillo over towards right center. Somewhat of a gap out there in left center. And he'll go the other way. Deaza will have to play it on a hop. One out single for Pilar. First hit of the day for the Blue Jays. In the bottom of the lineup for the Blue Jays in this series have been very, very effective in uh, Pilar. Going to the opposite field on the fastball. Diaz are trying to make a decision. Should I die for that? But no, he plays it on safety first, first hop, keep him at first base. So one out, Pollard first base, and Ryan Goins coming up. Batting out of the number nine spot. Always a chance for him to drop down a bunt. You never know. He's got good speed. Sandoval hit on the grass at third base in case. Now Bunting hitting a fly ball out to center field where Ruzne Castillo makes the catch for the second out of the inning. I don't think we've seen a slider so far from uh, Rodriguez. It's been fastballs and a couple of changeups. So two down, Pilar at first and back up top. Second time through now for the Blue Jays against Rodriguez. And here's Jose Reyes. Reyes popped out to Pedroia in second base in the first inning as they check on Pilar, but he's back to the bag. He can run. He's got eight steals, as you can see, only thrown out one time. In the dirt and starting and stopping at first base was Pilar. As Swihart gets to it pretty quickly, and Pilar threw the brakes on. Yeah, nice job by uh, Blake Swihart here as that ball bounces. It looks like just in front of the plate, and he's able to get some glove on it, slow it up, knock it down, and chase it down. Two different moves now to first base. One way he just stepped off the rubber and threw to first base, and that the more conventional move to first against Pilar. So we've seen two of them. Runner leaving as the pitch is a strike. The throw is going to be in time. Swihart guns down Kevin Pilar to end the top of the third inning. Let's see if the Blue Jays challenge this. John Gibbons is going to challenge it as he comes out of the dugout. And uh, he pointed out towards the umpire, but perhaps he's just buying some time here to see whether or not he's going to challenge it. See if they overturn this or not. Very close play at second base. You see the Red Sox also on the phone. They're taking a peek at it too in their video room. And John Gibbons is going to challenge it. Well, let's take another look. It was a good throw by Swihart. Does the foot get in before the tag? It may have. It was bang bang. You can see the foot getting into the bag, and it looks like the tag was on the trail foot. Up, 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 up. 
I think this one may be overturned on. Yep. It does look like that foot gets in before the tag. Jeff Kellogg, the second base umpire and crew chief, joined by Brian Onora. That's a pretty good slide put on by Pilar at second base for a, a foot first slide. A lot of times you see a guy goes in head, head first and try to reach around with his hand. And it looks like the tag may have missed that the leg, the right leg, and tagged the left foot. And if that's the case, then he would be safe. I think that one shows you the best, perhaps. That's probably the best angle we have. We're taking a good long look at it, though, right now, as this review continues. So either be a runner at second base with two down or the end of the inning. The other question is always the same question is it conclusive enough to overturn? Yeah. All in the field he is out and uh, now being reviewed as requested by John Gibbons. Looks like he tags you right that back foot as the front one reaches the bag I think that's what the replay looks like now we don't know if he got the front leg at all. Safe it's been overturned how about that so Pilar with a stolen base. And the inning continues with two outs. Pilar will be at second base. All right, stolen base of the season. And you certainly expected him to run right there. The Red Sox did everything they could. Swihart made a very good throw, but he had a great jump at first base. He saw two moves, two different moves, as I mentioned, from Rodriguez, and then finally picked a pitch, got a pretty good jump, and in scoring position. So two down here, Pilar at second base, and Jose Reyes with a count of one and one. On the ground, right side, softly hit. Pedroia charging in, throws out Reyes, and that will end the inning. So the Blue Jays leave Pilar at second. We're scoreless. Back at Fenway Park without a score. Red Sox have two hits. Blue Jays with one. Top of the Red Sox order. Dustin Pedroia leading it off here in the third. And Dustin taking strike one. A single to center field. Red Sox in back to back innings have had the lead runner on. Pedroia singled in the first and then Sandoval singled in the second. Neither able to score. 
Start to kind of yank that down and away. Strada had some control problems in the first. He walked two batters. Boston based Daily Fantasy Company, DraftKings.com, is giving out $300 million in cash prizes. Enter promo code Nesson to play for free. Fortieth pitch for Estrada. And Pedroia wraps it foul over by the Blue Jays dugout. Strata in and out of the bullpen and the starting rotation for the Blue Jays this year. There's a fly ball out to shallow left center field. Out goes Reyes. In comes Pilar, and the center fielder makes the catch for the first out of the third inning. Let's time now for the Geico Red Sox moment. All season long, Geico will highlight the 1975 Red Sox in honor of their 40th anniversary in their 64th game of the 75 season. The Red Sox fell to the Indians 11 to 3. Frank Duffy went four for five and had a two run homer for the Indians. Didn't go well that day for the Red Sox. No. One out for Brock Holt. Another start at first base for Holt. Back to back starts at first. And the word from John Farrell today that uh, most likely Napoli will be in the starting lineup tomorrow and giving him back to back days off as he did with Sandoval and Ortiz recently. Chance for Mike to kind of clear his head and really be struggling at the plate. Let's say he would be available though today in a pinch hitting role if necessary. The situation arises late in this game. Brock Holt is second at bat today as Holt flied out to center field in the first inning. In there for a strike three, and that is the third strikeout for Estrada. Two down here in the fourth inning. Uh, Brock Holt doesn't like it and again we talked about the strike zone for Al Porter behind the plate and uh, this one very borderline. Anything close with two strikes you've got to be swinging and there's Brock Holt having a few words with the Porter on the way back to the dugout. Just tell him that ball's away. Two down five in a row retired by Estrada and here's Hanley Ramirez. Down the right field line for Ramirez, and this ball is going to be a foul ball. Very little foul ground down there, but Hanley finds it. Ball slicing down there. Not much room in foul territory, but uh, Hanley finds it right off that wall. You know, we're talking about Napoli getting a couple of days off, and players have different opinions on how they, you know. Some guys say I'd rather keep playing because uh, how can I get out of a slump if I'm not playing and other guys accept the fact that yes maybe they need some time off and we've seen it uh, done consistently this year with as you mentioned Sandoval or cheese now Napoli popped up down the right field line Goins will get there right in fair ground and by the line Red Sox are gone in the third uh, we head on to the fourth scoreless.
That's on to the top of the fourth inning and Josh Donaldson leading it off here for the Blue Jays. Donaldson with a walk in the first inning only free pass served up by Eduardo Rodriguez. He's given up uh, just one hit to the first three innings and here's a pop up into shallow right center and it is going to fall. Deaza Castillo and Pedroia all trying to grab that but it falls in between them and Donaldson aboard with the second Blue Jays hit of the day. Batting 100 is no fun, but getting 100 feels great, especially when all you have to do to get 100 bucks is open an Eastern free checking account. Learn more at easternbank.com slash free checking. That's all Don carries in his pocket as hundos. <laughs> it's amazing. Josh Donaldson on to begin things here in the fourth inning. Jose Bautista. I think he went around defensively, and he did. Mark Rippinger, the first base umpire, said he did. Bautista grounding into a double play in the first inning. It's his second look here at Eduardo Rodriguez. First time today the Blue Jays have the lead runner on. Edwin Encarnacion waiting on deck. Blue Jays batting here in the top half of the fourth inning. And will bounce in and Swihart able to block it. No advance for Donaldson at first base. It's interesting uh, because you got a guy like a Rodriguez who has had great success in his first three starts and of course Toronto hears all about that. They watch video of him and you know and, until you face a guy you really don't know. You can watch all the video you want. Down the line at third and a fair ball kicks off the boxes. Heading for third base is Donaldson. He will get there, and it is first and third now. Nobody out for the Blue Jays. Right down that line, and a fair ball. Well, my point was going to be is that they're swinging the bat so well, they don't care who's out there right now. Just bring them on. And there's the bouncing ball that gets by Sandoval at third base, bounces off the wall and back toward the field to play. So you got a little first and third action with nobody out. There is Edwin Encarnacion to fly out to right field in the second inning. 0 for 1. Yeah, it's interesting how some hitters, if they have not faced a guy, will find somebody who is a similar hitter to them to see how he faced them if he has faced somebody else. Yeah, I'm sure they looked at a lot of the tape of the first three games that uh, he pitched, obviously, in the big leagues to see how he worked against certain hitters. But you really don't get a true test till you get up there, you know, and, and you see the movement on the fastball. You, you, you see, you read the velocity on the fastball. You see what the breaking ball looks like in person. We have not seen a slider yet. As you mentioned, it was not great last time out. You think uh, that's part of the reluctance to use it so far today? I don't know. I think I think right now he feels good with his fastball. He's throwing a few change-ups and maybe saving it for uh, the second time around, which is right now. There's the change-up again. Falls behind Encarnacion here, three and one. Right through the middle of this Blue Jays order. Donaldson with a base hit. Bautista a base hit. Now Encarnacion the batter. Back to the gas here with a 3 1 pitch. And he's able to pick up that outside corner with it. The center field a base hit for Encarnacion Donaldson will score from third and the Blue Jays take a one nothing lead and when Encarnacion drives in the game's first run 
Seven-game hitting streak now for Encarnacion and picks up his uh, 37th RBI. There's the fastball again. And the fastball this time is taken into center field on a line for the base hit. I think he's going to find that breaking ball, Don, because, you know, they're, they're just sitting right now on fastballs and, and pretty much taking the changeup. Two on, nobody out. Three straight hits here for the Blue Jays and a run as Chris Colabello now bats. Flat out to the center fielder, Ruzne Castillo, in the second inning. Off the end of the bat, foul. Time called, requested by Colabello, gets it from Al Porter. I think teams are going to try to do everything to disrupt the uh, the quickness that Rodriguez likes to uh, work his tempo. So Calabero that time stepping out, calling time out. Jammed him there. Fastball running in. We talked about uh, the Colabellos being from Massachusetts. There is Lou Colabello, the father of Chris Colabello, and they've had the chance to watch him in this three game series. Of course, uh, his first two years in the big leagues with the Minnesota Twins, now the Toronto Blue Jays. My heart headed out now to talk to Rodriguez. Stanley, the official tools of the Boston Red Sox. When you demand performance in action on the job site. Three hits in a row here for the Blue Jays and a run. Donaldson started it with a single to center. Batista followed it up with a single to left. And Carnacion with an RBI single to center. On the ground right side, Pedroia will go to second for one. And that's all they're going to get. Xander had to hop up over Encarnacion, who is coming in hard. And John Farrell is coming out here. Did he think that... Uh, he was sliding without being able to touch the bag at second, perhaps. And that has to be the argument right there from John Farrell as he points to the second base bag. But it seemed to me that uh, Encarnacion had plenty of the bag. Let's take another look. Well, he was he, his back was to the bag. His back was to the bag, but I still think he could probably reach it. He does come way out of the baseline. Yeah. That is, that's a legitimate, uh, I, you know, Farrell might, he might go here just to go. Just to go. I, I, I just, I got that feeling. There's no question the frustration for John Farrell this last week. He's been ejected once this season. Not very animated so far here. Just trying to get his point across to the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg. And definitely an argument could be made here. Personally, as someone who turned double plays, I, I think that was a good slide. So John Farrell headed back to the dugout. And another look at this slide at second base. Now, there's no question he comes out to get uh, Bogarts, but the question to me is can he first touch second base? And, you know, from that angle there, no, he can't reach no. and touch it. But that was like after the damage had already been done. It's 
So first and third with one out a run in here so far for the Blue Jays. Now Russell Martin who grounded out a shortstop first time up. He lifts one down the right field line in comes Deaza still coming and that's going to fall. From third base scores Bautista throw goes to second. And the Blue Jays take a two nothing lead here against Eduardo Rodriguez. And a flare that time down the right field line that Deaza could not run down. 11th everything going right for Martin recently offensively the big home run yesterday drops this one in front of Deaza. The only option for him is to go to second base but not in time to get the force play. Now four for his last four with runners in scoring position is Russell Martin and the Blue Jays on top two to nothing with two on and one out and Carl Willis at the mound. Well, Tuesday afternoon check out an all new Red Sox report members from the 1975 Red Sox relive their memories from that magical run of the greatest World Series ever played. Don't miss the Red Sox report Tuesday at 2 30. Alabello at second base Martin at first with one out. And here is Danny Valencia. Rounded out to the shortstop Xander Bogarts in the third inning. Tried to hold up and did for ball one. Yeah, they'll check now, and he did hold up, according to Mark Rippinger, the first base umpire. Yankees and Orioles playing day baseball today in Baltimore and that game is tied two to two at last check in the second inning. The Yankees in a virtual tie with the Tampa Bay. Top the American League East to begin the day Red Sox seven games back. 2 0 pitch as Valencia jumping back out of the way. Well, the Orioles have made their way back into yes. it haven't they they're only two back Toronto one back and followed by the Red Sox at seven. And the Blue Jays having won 10 in a row kind of coincided with the Yankees winning all those games seven in a row at one point for New York. So while they are two games back it seems as if or one game back heading into today's action that this run coincided with that to Yankees winning streak but uh, things bunched up Red Sox not really part of it right now unfortunately. 3 0 pitch coming to Valencia. And that is a called strike. Valencia thought he had ball four. There is ball four inside. And the second walk given up by Rodriguez. Base is now loaded. A walk back in the first inning to Donaldson. Now a walk to load the bases here in the fourth. Bases filled with Blue Jays here, and here is Kevin Pillar singled and stole a base in the third inning. Two for four on the year with the bases loaded. And it's fouled straight back. 93 on the fastball from Rodriguez. Inning start with a single by Donaldson, a single by Bautista, an RBI single by Edwin Encarnacion. Chris Calabello grounding into a fielder's choice, then an RBI single by Russell Martin. Walk to Valencia and two runs in here for the Jays with the bases loaded. And Pilar lunges after that down to one knee, one and two. That's the change up that time to get the off balance swing by Pilar. <laughs> and 
Big spot here for Eduardo Rodriguez. This one fouled back as Rodriguez tries to minimize the damage in this fourth inning. Meanwhile, through the first three, Red Sox have been held to two hits. Lar thought about it. Did he go? No, says Mark Rippinger. Two balls, two strikes to Pilar. Tried the change up away from Pilar. Does he go? No, I don't think he did. Looks like he checked the swing. He was actually pointing to first base. He wanted the umpire to make the call down there. Time call very late. Rodriguez able to hold up, stopping at the last possible second. Sixtieth pitch coming up here for Rodriguez. And a foul off to the right into the seats. Ninth pitch of the inning for Rodriguez. And Pilar pops it up as Pedroia backpedals, battling the sun, can't see it, and it's going to fall. From third base comes Colabello, throw to second base, and he is out there, able to force out Valencia at second base, but a run in for the Blue Jays. They take a 3 0 lead on a ball that Pedroia just lost in the sun. Yep, it happens, and it's a helpless feeling. You can tell right there he's yelling for help. I can't see it. And nobody can get there in time. He didn't he couldn't see that off contact because as soon as he went back he had no idea where the, the ball was and he could see him yelling help help but the, nobody could get there. It was too shallow. So a fielder's choice that gets a Pilar to first as they're able to force out Valencia at second base. One scores in Colabello the third Blue Jays run. As Russell Martin takes third. And now Ryan Goins will pop it up foul off to the left out of play. The Pilar first base may try it again. He may try to steal again. Two outs in the inning. Shows bunt, pulls it back, gets away from Swihart, and Pilar will move up to second base and advance for Martin at third. But Pilar now in a scoring position and a second and a ball in the dirt. Now well, he was heading in that direction, I'm sure, one way or the other. That time he gets there on the wild pitch. Jerry, was that a slider there? Maybe one of the first we have seen. Now we've seen a couple of them, but they haven't been very good, Don. They've almost acted like changeups. Second and third now with two outs in the inning. Able to hold up on a pitch that was running in. Didn't go, says Brian O'Nora. Carl Willis just returning from a phone call to the pen, and somebody's going to get up out there. Looks like Stephen Wright may be first up. And it is Wright. We'll start to warm up here for the Red Sox. With Rodriguez running into trouble here in the fourth inning. High fly ball to deep right field. Deaza full sprint back to the bullpen. Can't get it. Three run home run for Ryan Goins. And the Blue Jays put a six spot on the board against Eduardo Rodriguez. First trouble that he has had in the majors. And the Blue Jays continue to roll along. Gets the fastball inside Goins. He can see that front shoulder leaving a little bit early. Lefty against lefty, and he makes good, solid contact. Deaza back to the wall. He can't make the play, and 
I'll tell you, this Toronto offense has really been something. Number nine man Ryan Goins with a three run home run to put the Blue Jays on top six to nothing. Stephen Wright warming up in the Red Sox pen just did get up. It's been a 35 pitch inning so far for Eduardo Rodriguez. And he's not out of it yet dealing with the ninth batter of this inning. On the ground foul. A pretty good test here today for Eduardo Rodriguez of all the teams he's faced. He's not faced a lineup like this yet. No. And today he has. He's protecting the plate and fouling that back. And he's and he's trying to do it, Don, with just two of his weapons, his fastball and his changeup. Slider has been non-existent in this game for him. Pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket for Eduardo Rodriguez. Six runs all earned. And a swing and a miss of Reyes to end the inning, but the damage has most certainly been done. It's six to nothing, Toronto. You'll get a hundred dollars. Learn more at easternbank.com slash free checking. A beautiful day in Boston, but the score not so good here at Fenway Park as the Blue Jays put a six spot on the board in the top of the fourth inning of Eduardo Rodriguez. Red Sox coming to bat now in the bottom of the fourth. David Ortiz leading it off a 30 minute wait for Marco Estrada while well, his offense was putting together those six runs. The Jays in the shift on the right side against Big Poppy. His second look today at Estrada. David worked to walk in the first inning. Fiftieth pitch for Estrada. Is that changeup again? Back-to-back -back changeups uh, to Ortiz. David fouls it off. It's 
It's now six in a row retired by Estrada. With Xander Bogarts waiting on deck. Now we'll see Pablo Sandoval as part of this bottom of the fourth inning. Another foul over by the Red Sox dugout. Well, for the first time we have seen Eduardo Rodriguez get hit around a bit. And the Blue Jays doing it in the fourth inning, sending nine men to bat, six score. There's a ground ball into the shift. It's Goins in short right. Throws out David Ortiz. One down here in the fourth. Let's check in with Tom Karen. All right, Don, we're here with Lou Colabella, father of first baseman Chris Colabella. His first weekend playing at Fenway Park. I know he made it up with Minnesota a couple years ago, now back with Toronto. But as a dad, watching him play as a kid in Legion Ball in Milford, what's it like watching your son play at Fenway Park? Absolutely fantastic, Tom. Uh, a dream of every dad is to have your kid get to the big leagues, but to have your kid get to the big leagues and play 45 minutes from his home in one of the greatest ballparks in Major League Baseball, just a fantastic feeling for my wife and I, and um, we, we just, uh, you know, hope this dream continues. I told him, don't wake up. You know, he's worked so hard to get here. I, I know he it hasn't been lost on him what it means to start Friday night in left field where, where Ted Williams and Carly Ostrowski and Jim Rice all play. Uh, you know, I grew up watching all those guys play baseball and admired every one of them for the way they approached the game and for what they did for the game of baseball. And uh, to have you, your son stand in the same blades of grass that they did and to be able to just turn around and look at that big green monster, um, just a, a feeling that I, I, I can't express it in words. You were a pitcher, you, you mass, and you pitched for the Italian Olympic team. And, and so I know your conversations with him after games are always from the pitcher's perspective. Now, he told me he invokes a three-game suspension if you get a little too critical of his at-bats. Is that correct? It's very true. Um, you know, I try, I try not to. But uh, being his mentor from when he was five years old, uh, I never coached him in high school, but I kind of feel that I live and die every one of his at-bats. And, of course, every father wants his hit kid to get a hit every time he gets up at bat. And uh, I forget once in a while, and I'll send him a little derogatory text, and then I don't get a phone call for three days. A three-game suspension. And again, it's fine. You went on Kevin Millar's show here Friday with him. And he's not real happy because apparently they asked you how you would pitch him, and you kind of gave away the book on your son. Well, I've always told him by watching him play, and I was left-handed, I said I would give you a comfortable 0 for 4 because that's all I'd do is throw your change-ups down and away, and you haven't proved to me over the years that you can hit it. And then I thought, oh, boy, I just gave the Red Sox and the rest of the American League a scouting report. But, uh, you know, he'll overcome it, I'm sure. All right, you told me I had to call you Sweet Lou at least once during the interview. So, Sweet Lou, thanks for the time. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks very much for having me. It's been great. All right, now you know how you got tough enough. When you get the book from your dad like that, and dad tells you you're going to go 0 for 4 against him, you better be tough when you face Major League Pitching, guys. Yeah, Chris pretty tough, too, giving his dad a three-game suspension every now and again, you know. <laughs> That's great. Great story and uh, great that his family could be here and they are checking this out right now having a discussion this umpire and crew after Xander Bogarts uh, home plate umpire Al Porter said that he was hit by the pitch and he was not entirely sure so they're getting together to find out. It looks like he hit the bat not Xander. Yeah they, uh, Al Porter I think called the umpires in after this because I don't think he was completely sure just had what had it happened in that at bat did he get Bogarts's hand or did he get the bat. And even on replay, I'm having a difficult time seeing which one it got. It looked like it got him in the fingers. As you can see, Al Porter is also blocked by the glove of Russell Martin. And now John Farrell is coming out here. And Farrell is going to have him challenge it and check it out. They, as a group, decided that. It hit the bat apparently and now John Farrell wants them to check it out. It's a tough one Don you look at it and say it possibly could have got his fingers or the bat as we take one more look at it and maybe we can stop it. I don't know if we can stop this but it's uh, right just before that it looked like it might have got his fingers or that's that's awfully tough to tell. Now when I look at it there it looks like it did get the bat. Yep. And that's a, that's just about stopping it right there the bat then the fingers. That's a great shot guys I mean stopping that to right on contact and on contact it looked like it may have got the bat first then the fingers.
Well, this is a quick call. Let's see what they've got. It is a foul ball, and he'll have to come on back, so it gets the bat. Bogart's not happy. John Farrell not happy. The challenge is lost. Things are going to boil over pretty soon, I think, for John Farrell. Now, this has been an incredibly uh, stressful and disappointing week for Farrell, and uh, you can read it all over his face, not only during the games, but uh, away from the games, and he's about had enough. So Bogart's back in the batter's box here with a count of two and two with one out in the fourth inning. Strata has retired seven in a row. And David Ortiz to ground into the shift for the first out of this inning after a 30 minute wait. Now a chopper to first base. Kyle Bella will take it himself to the bag ahead of the arrival of Bogarts for out number two of the fourth inning. So make sure to take advantage of specially priced student tickets. Nine dollar tickets are available for every Sox game for all students 15 and over. Visit RedSox.com slash students to take advantage of this great offer today. So two down here in the fourth and it brings up Pablo Sandoval. A single to center field in the second inning one of only two hits the Red Sox have collected so far against Marco Estrada. Fly ball, center field. Pilar heading back towards the warning track, and that ball is going to be off the base of the wall. Bit of a collision out there between Valencia and Pilar. Sandoval's headed for third, and he will get there. And two guys are banged up out there. You got Pilar and Valencia coming together, and they're both slow to get up. And Valencia appears to have gotten the worst of it. That ball just kept pushing out toward the left field wall and it looked like they had it under control but uh, no it goes uh, right there crashing into the wall goes Pilar and then Valencia I don't know what happened to him but he had to come chasing that ball off the wall Did he get stepped on he might have got stepped on by Pilar. Sandoval makes his way to third base with the triple. Very unusual to see a triple off the left field wall. So Sandoval 90 feet away with two outs here in the inning. Alejandro De Aza, a strikeout victim in the second inning. He went looking. First triple for Sandoval in a Red Sox uniform. As De Aza takes strike one. Leaves of that pitch badly fooled 0 and 2. Curveball that time and keeping the curveball away from Deaza. Trying to hold up. Did he go? No, says Brian O'Nora. Sandoval at third, two down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Red Sox trying to chip away here at a six run deficit. Rizne Castillo waiting on deck. There are two outs here in the fourth inning. Down the left field line and foul back into the grandstand area.
Popped up. Left side. Wynn's going to play with it a little bit. From short comes Reyes, and he'll make the catch in foul ground. Red Sox leave Sandoval at third at 6 nothing Toronto. Back at Fenway as we head into the fifth inning with the Blue Jays on top six to nothing. Now hitting the Red Sox six to three with Josh Donaldson leading it off here for the Blue Jays. He's the guy that got it started in the fourth inning with a single to center. They would go on to score six times in the fourth inning. Ground ball to shortstop. Xander Bogart slides to his right for the first out here of the fifth inning. Now coming up, we'll have a special mid-fifth studio show presented by GMC. Adam Pellerin and Steve Lyons will give you their thoughts on today's game so far. We'll check that out. Coming up in the middle portion of this inning. One out for Jose Bautista. He's grounded into a 4-3 double play and single to left. He's also scored a run. You were talking, uh, you know, last inning about how close Farrell may be getting to getting thrown out of a game and, you know, whether that fires the team up. And I never really bought that as a player. You know, mm -hmm. I, I always felt that the frustration obviously comes from the manager himself, who is totally frustrated at what's going on. But it's what you do on the field that really matters. Tough hop, nicely picked by Sandoval. And there are two outs in the inning. So if he goes out there and kicks some stuff and gets thrown out yeah. of the game, it's not going to do never, anything for you. I never thought so. You know, and, and, and sometimes actually it was comical, uh, you know, when a manager would come out. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, they, they do it and they used to say, well, that, that, that would fire up the club. And it, I, I honestly don't think it does. I mean, it shows the frustration that the manager has right now and that he's battling for his team. But it's what you do on the field that counts. And just because the manager comes out, gets you know, argues, and gets thrown out of a game, isn't going to make you play better. That's just my personal feeling, and because I've seen some jokes as managers getting thrown out of a game, yeah. And uh, you know, it's but sometimes it reaches a boiling point for them because there's nothing else they can do. They can't go up and hit and field and do all those things, so they just get totally frustrated. Now, from a motivation standpoint, it seems like sometimes, and the Red Sox have seen it. Jason Veritek's case uh, in 2004, but it seems like altercations with other teams sometimes can uh, get you going. A sometimes little bit. those can, yeah. They they have a way. It, it's strange, and you don't like to see it. No, but they have a way of unifying a club for some odd reason for at least a short period of time. 
I tell, I've told the story before, and I'll tell it one more time. Ralph Houck came out one day here at Fenway Park, and, and he wanted to get thrown out of the game. There's no question about that. And he's with the second base umpire, and he's acting like he's yelling and screaming, and he's kicking his hat, and he's doing all this stuff, and he's saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the umpire didn't know what to do. He said, Jerry, should I throw him? I said, yeah, he wants to go. Throw oh, him. Oh, my goodness. This falls in front of four Red Sox. And around from first base comes Encarnacion to take a 7-0 lead. I mean, can it get any worse? Who's raining down from the top tiers of Fenway worse? I mean, can it really get any worse? Pedroia, I think, having a tough time seeing that gets called off. It sounded like Bogarts, and then one of the outfielders must have called off Bogarts, and the ball just drops in. So you see two middle infielders who's had a legitimate chance at making that play being called off, and the outfielders can't get there. A single and an RBI for Colabello that has Encarnacion score all the way from first base. This one fouled off to our right. So Martin now batting for the third time today is grounded out to short single to right to drive in a run. The strike hand it's a ball and two strikes now to Martin. Blue Jays coming into this game having won their last 10 straight games. They have a 7 0 lead today as they bat with two outs here in the fifth inning. Martin lines this to the left field corner as Calabello is headed for third. Ramirez has trouble with it, and Calabello is now going to try and score, and he will. So a bobble by Hanley Ramirez. That's not going to help the boo factor here at Fenway Park. No, it just gets uh, it gets worse and worse. Russell Martin ends up at second base, and Eduardo Rodriguez will end up out of this game. There's John Farrell out to make the change, as the Blue Jays have now taken an eight to nothing lead. All this coming with two outs in the inning. The walk to Encarnacion, and that is Eduardo Rodriguez's first. Bad outing in the major leagues as he departs. Stephen Wright coming in.
And Danny Valencia batting with Russell Martin at second base. And he drives one deep and far to left field. A long, long two run home run for Danny Valencia. And the Blue Jays will make it an even 10. They have won 10 games in a row and they lead this game 10 to nothing. And it just gets uglier. I'll tell you, I have never seen a team so far this season as hot right now as the Toronto Blue Jays. And of course, the numbers back that up. But what, from what we've seen in this series, I mean, it's incredible. Knuckleball right there doesn't do very much, and Valencia just loses it. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. It's not just losing here, Jerry. It is the way not the Red to, Sox are losing right now. It's been very ugly. Grounded foul outside of third. Line sharply in the center field, a base hit for Pilar, his second hit of the day. Third time he has been on base. Now, Pilar's had a heck of a series against the Red Sox. He really has. Two hits today in the ball game. The bottom of the order has done very well in yes. this series against the Red Sox. Ryan going to a three run home run from his number nine spot in the order in the fourth inning. Foul back and it's a ball and a strike. So Eduardo Rodriguez ends up being charged with nine of the ten runs. Four and two thirds, eight hits, nine runs. Walk three, struck out a batter, and on the hook for the first time. Swing and a miss, and striking out is going to end the inning, but. 10 to nothing. Blue Jays have the lead. Let's send it back to Adam and Steve in the studio. As the Toronto Blue Jays have 
Taking a 10 nothing lead here through four and a half innings from Fenway Park. Danny Valencia with a two run home run to cap that uh, four run top of the fifth inning. Marco Estrada back on the hill here for the Blue Jays into the bottom of the fifth we go. And it's Ruzne Castillo leads it off for Boston. Ruzne struck out swinging in the second inning. 0 for 1. Seventieth pitch for Estrada, and the last thing he wanted to do in the world, up ten to nothing, is walk the leadoff hitter here in the fifth inning. Walk anybody at this point. This is the third walk given up by Estrada. Now for every Red Sox hit in June, Echo Store Technologies will donate fifty dollars to the Sean Thornton Foundation. To learn more, log on to EchoStore.com. Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. Lead off walk here for Ruzne Castillo. Here is Blake Swihart. Swihart flat out to the warning track in left field. Ball caught out there by Danny Valencia in front of the scoreboard. Fouled off to the left out of play. Well, join the 2020 club and enjoy an affordable, fun night at Fenway Park. Groups of 20 or more start at $20 each. Visit redstocks.com slash groups for more information. Swihart hooks it into right field for a base hit. Castillo heading first to third. And the Red Sox have runners at the corners with nobody out here in the fifth inning. Uh, Swihart there hits a pretty good changeup by Estrada. The ball's going to be down. It's going to be inside. He reaches down and almost picks it off the ground to put it on the line in a right field for the base hit. First and third, nobody out. Dustin Pedroia, the batter. Pedroia singled in the first, flied out to center in the third, and gets his third look at Estrada today. That's a fly ball to right field. Bautista battling the sun, surrounds it and can't catch it. So finally, as a run scores from third and Castillo, the sun works in the Red Sox advantage for a change. How strange is that? I mean, uh, Pedroia lost the ball in the sun earlier in the ball game that dropped in. Now he hits one that is lost in the sun by Bautista. So Pedroia picks up the RBI, second hit of the ball game, 27th RBI of the season. First and second, a run in, nobody out. Brock Holt, the batter. Fly ball, center field. Pilar battling as he heads in front of the warning track to make the catch and then fires in. First out here, the bottom of the fifth inning. So a hole retired. It'll bring up Hanley Ramirez. Hanley has walked, popped out to second base in two plate appearances today.
Strike one to Ramirez. So Pedroia's got two hits in the game. Sandoval with two hits in the game. Red Sox have five as a team. Another hit belonging to Blake Swihart and a single in this inning. Same spot missing low and away two and one Marco Estrada's pitching line is brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers four and a third five hits a run. And he's walked three struck out three about to throw his 80th pitch of the day. That's some long waits while his team scored six times in the fourth and four times in the fifth and he's trying to get through this fifth inning. Two one. And a base hit back up the middle in the center field. Swihart's coming around. Here's a throw from Pilar, and it'll be not in time. Red Sox get their second run. Pretty good bit out there by Pilar, the center fielder with the throw to the plate. And the Ramirez with an RBI single. Now Hanley got a hanging breaking ball that time and rockets it right back up the middle. And you're right, Don. This is a very strong throw by Pilar. Made it much closer than I ever anticipated it would be. Swipe tag there by Martin, but not in time to get Swihart. Damn, when well, we watch Pilar in this series, I mean, he he's playing some great baseball. That's all you can do for the Red Sox is peck away and hope you get a big blast and get back in the ball game. Two on, one away. David Ortiz, the batter. David walked in the first inning, grounded out to second base in the fourth. And on the hands for ball two, two and zero. Oh. Framingham North, they believe. The Spartans. Two O pitch. And that's in there for a strike. Two and one. We talked about at the beginning of the game when he needs a pitch, he goes to that changeup and two balls, no strikes. What does he feature to Ortiz? A changeup. Swing there from Big Poppy. Not a full shift on here. They do move Reyes over towards the bag at second, but not quite on the right side of the infield on David Ortiz. And they keep it close to the infield with double play possibilities. Ortiz fouls it off and hangs tough here at two and two. Get immediate care without leaving the ballpark at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center First Aid Station. Located right behind Section 12 on the lower concourse. BIDMC is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. Photojournalist John Martin. His daughter Kaya here at the ballpark. 2-2. Two -two. In the air foul off to the left out of play.
Ortiz to deep right field. Back goes Bautista at the wall. That ball is gone. Big Poppy with a three-run home run. Here come the Sox. Don, that's exactly what I was talking about. I mean, you know, you're down, you're getting beat bad in the ball game. You're in that dugout, and all you say is, okay, let's see if we can get some base hits, maybe get a long ball, and get back in the ball game, get some momentum on our side. Well, the Red Sox have done that now. They're down, still down by five, but they've got uh, a couple of, you know, a couple of hits and then the home run, and it kind of changes the feeling a little bit. We got a shot. Xander Bogarts taking the strike for every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season. All Town will donate $500 to the Cystic Fibrosis Multiple Sclerosis Fund. All Town is New England's premier healthier convenience retailer. David Ortiz tied now with Stan Musial and Willie Stargell. 475 home runs. One two pitch in the dirt and it is two and two. Ryan Tapera up in the pen now for the Blue Jays been up a few times in the series. Started trying to get through this fifth inning and John Gibbons giving him the opportunity to try to get through it but. It pretty hard here in the inning the fly ball to right Batista. Makes the catch this time. Looking up into the sun and handling out number two. One more look at the David Ortiz home run, the fastball that he gets, and as we lose it in the sun, it finds its way into the Toronto bullpen. Sandoval is jammed in on the hands and fouls it off to the left. Sandoval two for two, a single to center, a triple. Back in left center field back in the fourth inning. Panda hats throughout the ballpark. No two pitch. And it is sharply hit nicely picked at third by Donaldson whose throw is in time to get Sandoval good stretch on the other side by Colabello. Red Sox score five times it's ten to five Toronto.
Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Now the Red Sox able to get five back in the bottom of the fifth inning. It's on to the sixth we go. And the top of the Blue Jays order. Only member of the starting nine not to have a base hit is Jose Reyes. Reyes has popped out to second, grounded out to second, and struck out swinging. Stephen Wright has been touched for a run of his own. Gave up the two run home run to Danny Valencia, first batter that he faced in the fifth inning, but one of the runs charged to Eduardo Rodriguez, who today in four and two thirds gives up eight hits and nine runs. Chopped down the first baseline, and that'll stay foul. Ace ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, is the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway. All with a 200% guarantee. Right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games, including the Yankees. This is an Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Reyes reaches out and sends it into center field. A base hit for Reyes. Now, everybody in the Blue Jays starting nine has at least one hit today. And Reyes, with that base hit, extends his hitting streak to 11 straight games. Knuckleball upstairs, and Reyes able to get on top of it. Look at that underspin on the baseball heading up the middle. Lead runner on here for the Jays. Here's Josh Donaldson. Walk in the first inning for Donaldson. He singled to center field in the fourth. We're grounding out to the shortstop in the fifth. Couple of high knucklers, 75 miles an hour on that last one from Stephen Wright. Throw over and back to the bag is Reyes. Right, trying to log some innings and. Quiet this Blue Jays offense. Easier said than done. A little pop up. And that'll go foul off to the right out of play. H.B. Hood salutes the Red Sox Foundation for its commitment to 4,900 accredited charities throughout New England. Fouled off at the plate. 1 2 here to Donaldson. Swihart able to pick that as it turned out. Didn't know where it was initially. Ended up back in his glove. And actually, Donaldson was telling Reyes to go to second yeah. base, but uh, probably a good thing that he didn't because Swihart had that bounce right back in his throwing hand, didn't it? There's the bounce off the glove and up on the elbow and into the throwing hand. Donaldson with a swing and a miss strikes out. First out of the sixth inning. Right, staying with the knuckleball, picking up the strikeout. A lot of knuckleballs inside. That went more toward the middle of the plate, but still gets the swing and miss. Make insurance great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. One on, one out. Jose Bautista will take strike one. Bautista grounding into a double play in the first inning. Single to left and scored in the fourth, and grounded out to third base in the fifth. Oh and two. Foul back still oh and two.
Well, closer this time. Reyes back to the bag, crossing over. Gets away, but Reyes is going to stay right where he's at. Ball ended up hitting him. Brock Holt making his second straight start at first base, holding on Reyes with one out in the inning. Now Batista, did he go? Yes, he did. Rung up by Rippinger, the first base umpire. Back to back strikeouts for Stephen Wright. Two down in the inning. That knuckleball sailed up and away, as you can see right here from uh, Bautista. Could not control the head of the bat. Clearly a swing right there, and no argument from Bautista as he heads back to the dugout. Two down for Edwin Encarnacion, who will take a pitch for strike one. Right out to right field in the second inning, single to center in the fourth before walking and scoring in the fifth. On the ground down the third baseline, Sandoval to the backhand and the throw in time. So right works his way around a leadoff single by Reyes. It's 10 to 5 Toronto. Nissan gets a Nissan's ride of your life for exciting performance and bonus cash. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. Thank you, New England, for 60 great years. Your New England Ford dealers. And by the Scion TC. A beautiful day in Boston today. 10 to 5. Blue Jays have the lead over the Red Sox as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. And the pitcher for the Jays, Ryan Tapera, into the game. His eighth appearance without a record of 4.32 earned run average. Seven strikeouts, no walks, and opponents hitting at 194 against Tapera. Pretty good fastball there, 97 miles an hour to Deaza. Popped up, shallow right center field, falling fast, and uh, it'll be Pilar coming in, sliding to make the catch. Kevin Pilar continues to have a great series. Yeah, I mean, what more can this guy do over this weekend in Boston? It's been incredible. 
His play has been absolutely outstanding. It looked like this ball was going to drop in in the Bermuda Triangle, and all of a sudden, Pilar comes from center field and is able to make a diving catch. And he, he knows Goins is right to his right. But still, no let up at all. One down here in the sixth inning, Ruzne Castillo. Uh, struck out and walked scored a run for the Red Sox his walk started the fifth inning for the Red Sox uh, an inning in which they would score five times. Ground ball down the third baseline Donaldson rounds behind it is off balance throw is there in plenty of time two down. Let's have a check out the results of today's Dunkin Donuts poll question we asked should there be more home and home series. 61 to 39. Answer is yes. More home and home series. The Red Sox have one coming up here. Two games against the Atlanta Braves here at Fenway Park before shifting the series to Atlanta. Turn a field for two games. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Blake Swihart, the batter. Swihart with a single his last time up to right field. Came around to score the Red Sox second run of the day. Ground ball softly hit towards Colabello. He'll tag the bag and end the inning. Red Sox down in order in the sixth. On to the seventh, 10 5 Toronto. Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Stephen Wright back on the mound for the Red Sox. Toronto on top 10 to 5. So we play along to the seventh inning. Chris Colabello leading it off with an opposite field base hit. And Colabello with his second hit of the day. Uh, came in the game hitting 341 for the Blue Jays and two for four this afternoon with an RBI. Takes the knuckleball to the opposite field this time for the baseball for the base hit an inside out swing. Lead runner on here for the Jays. So Martin the batter Martin has grounded a short single to right doubled to left.
Wright takes the strike. Two and one the count. Stephen Wright has been in the game since the fifth inning. Two balls, two strikes to the Blue Jays catcher. Has had a two hit game, a single and a double. A little bit low, full count. Inside, that is ball four. Ball gets away, is up to second base, goes Colabello. So two on here for the Blue Jays. Nobody out. Let's get a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Adam? Thanks very much Adam back here at Fenway Park with the first two on for the Blue Jays. Nobody out Danny Valencia the batter and this one will get away. Runners moving up Colabello going to third and Martin to second base. See that late movement on the knuckleball as he uh, tilts it off to the side and it acts like a curveball that gets away from. Swihart, two men in scoring position. Red Sox pull the infield in, down by the five runs. On the ground at third base with the infield in, Sandoval corrals it and throws to first for the out. No advance for the base runners. One out here in the seventh. Tommy Lane now up in the Red Sox pen. Here comes Carl Willis. Buy some time for Lane as first to reach in the inning. A single by Colabello, a walk by Martin before Valencia. Rounded out to third base. Well, join us tomorrow night for Aetna Night at Fenway. Aetna has the people and the technology to connect you to health care and options that are right for you. When bad hops happen, Aetna can help you bounce back. Health insurance plans are offered by Aetna Life Insurance Company and its affiliates. Second and third with one out here in the top of the seventh inning. And Kevin Pilar coming up. He's done it offensively and defensively today for the Blue Jays. Single to right, stole a base in the third. Reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth and singled in the fifth. Infield still in. Popped up right side as they were in. They got to duck back a bit. Bedroya makes the catch for the second out here of the seventh inning. Now two big outs for the Red Sox there. Second and third situation. The ground ball out to Sandoval. The pop up to Bedroya. Out comes Farrell. That is the day for Stephen Wright leaving here with two outs in the seventh inning and Tommy Lane will be coming in for Boston. So Wright goes two innings of relief still responsible for the runners at second and third with two outs here in the seventh inning. Strikes out three walks a batter. Let's send it down to Tom. Well, Don, after this one, the always popular two-game interleague series begin. It's the home-and-home -home series to bring you back to your days as the voice of the Springfield Indians in the American Hockey League. Two games with the Atlanta Braves here. 
Then the road trip begins down in Atlanta. When you take on two games, we take a look at the road ahead. It's brought to you by People's United Bank. After the four games with the Braves, two home, two away, you've got three in Kansas City where they're nothing but all-stars playing for the Royals. Then it's back to the American League East where the Red Sox have had so much trouble opening up a series at home against Baltimore before they go to Tampa Bay and Toronto. That's the road ahead brought to you by People's United Bank. Don? All right, Tom, thanks very much. And a two game series with the Atlanta Braves coming up here at Fenway and then down to Atlanta. And Red Sox uh, catching a Braves team that'll be here tomorrow. And Atlanta right now 30 and 32. And they are two games under 500, but just two and a half games back of the Mets in the National League East. The only pitcher on here for the Red Sox with two outs in the seventh inning is Tommy Lane. His 25th appearance, 0 and 1. The 2.66 earned run average, 22 strikeouts to nine walks. And opponents hitting at 183 against a left hander. Comes into a second and third two out situation. And he'll be dealing with Ryan Goins. And a three run home run as part of a six run fourth inning for the Blue Jays today. Well, it's coming off Eduardo Rodriguez too as he gets the ball inside and going. Pulling that ball. Out toward the Blue Jay bullpen, up over the reach of uh, Deaza. Along with that home run, Goins flying out of center and striking out, swinging today, one for three day. For the Blue Jays' second baseman, the bats with Chris Calabello at third base, Russell Martin at second base, and two outs here in the seventh. By much, two and zero. Oh. Tommy Lane started the seventh inning yesterday, going two thirds of an inning against the Blue Jays. He's able to get Goins to ground out as one of those two outs. This is driven this time towards the gap in left center field, and it's going to get down to the track and the wall. Calabello has scored. Martin has scored, and heading for three and. Safe at third base is Ryan Goins as the Blue Jays take a 12 5 lead. Well, Goins now has done it twice against left handed pitching. He got Rodriguez for the home run now against Tommy Lane, and he goes to the opposite field. It's a slider, and he just goes with it. And how he ends on third base, I, I don't know. I mean, oh, the ball dropped right there by Castillo, as you can see, and he just keeps on going to third base. The relay throw looks like it bounces out of the glove of Pablo Sandoval. There's a throw coming in just dropped by Sandoval and a little collision there between he and Goins. Now a liner towards the gap in left center field. That'll get down and roll a ways. Goins scores from third base. And it is a double and an RBI for Jose Reyes and it's now 13 to 5 Blue Jays. Reyes picks up uh, his second hit of the day. This time the RBI double into the gap. Almost the same location where Goins hit it. But closed on Stephen Wright. Two innings, four hits, three runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Goins was credited with a double error charge to Castillo. They got Goins to third base. 
You know you're going well when your number nine hitter has produced five runs in this game. Yeah, look at the whole series, the eight and nine hitters. Yes. Donaldson on the ground is short. Bogarts to first for the out that ends the inning. Blue Jays get three more runs in this inning. Today's game summary is brought to you by Xfinity. And a strata of the starter for the Blue Jays pitch of record right now. Five innings, seven hits, five runs before he departed. And some big offensive days today for the Blue Jays as the Red Sox starter roughed up for the first time in his major league career. Eduardo Rodriguez in four and two thirds innings ends up giving up eight hits and nine runs. David Ortiz homering again today. But right now, the Blue Jays have a 13 to 5 lead as we set it to field level for God Bless America. We ask you to please rise. Here to honor America, we welcome a veteran of the Korean War who was awarded the Bronze Star to perform God Bless America. Please welcome a resident of Londonderry, New Hampshire, Sam Massessa. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountain to the prairie to the ocean, wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet. Boston Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Your local Subaru dealers. Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. And by the Kia Sorento. Thirteen to five. The Blue Jays have the lead over the Red Sox. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Top of the Red Sox order, Dustin Pedroia to lead it off. Brock Holt and Hanley Ramirez scheduled to face Ryan Tapera back out on the mound for the Jays. Action for the Blue Jays, the veteran left hander Phil Coke. Pedro 
away with a two hit day today. Single to center in the first, single to right in the fifth. And got himself an RBI. Now 27 RBIs on the year for the Red Sox second baseman. Pedroia to right, Bautista moves over and makes the catch. Red Sox suites and premium packages provide a VIP experience for you and your guests. Call 877-RED-SOX-9 or email premium sales at redsox.com for more information. Six in a row now, retired by Blue Jays pitching. One out in the seventh, and here comes Brock Holt. Holt says fly to center, struck out looking, and then fly to center again. Action for the Red Sox in the pen. Heath Hembury is up. And a base hit for Brock Holt the other way. His first hit today. Toyo Tires, the official tire of the Boston Red Sox. Whether you're taking a truck off road, the kids to practice, or your sports car to its limits, there's a Toyo Tire for you. Visit ToyoTires.com to find a dealer near you. One out, one on for Hanley Ramirez. His walk popped out to second and single to drive in a run. David Ortiz on deck, one out, one on here in the bottom of the seventh. That's a pair of certainly a much hotter thrower than what we saw at the beginning of the game from Estrada, 95 to 97 with the fastball. Foul back. Good rip there by her by Ramirez. Double barreled action now for the Blue Jays in their pen. Coke, who had been up, has now been joined by Roberto Osuna. So a right hander and a left hander up for the Jays. John Gibbons starter Marco Estrada lasted five innings, giving up the five runs the Red Sox have. Has gone an inning and a third so far of relief. Popped up in a shallow left center. Reyes back pedaling. And he'll make the catch right in front of Valencia, the left fielder coming in. Two outs here in the seventh inning. Well, don't miss WB Mason extra innings live right after the game today. Adam Pellerin and Steve Lyons will break down today's game, and you'll hear from Eduardo Rodriguez. Whatever, whenever, wherever. Who but WB Mason? You know, David Ortiz fan on the monster seats looking on as David Ortiz stands in. Rips this foul back towards the grandstand off the facade and back down into it. Now back in the fifth inning, David Ortiz with a three run home run. His ninth of the season. That was in the inning. The Red Sox scored five runs in this game. Ortiz chops at it down the first baseline foul.
two outs. Brock Holt at first base here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two and two. A little different look that time. The slip thing and fastball down and away from Ortiz after a number of fastballs and cut fastballs. Guys, one foul off to the left hand out of play. Two two pitch to David Ortiz. Full count now. So Holt can get a start at first base with a full count, two down here in the inning. Xander Bogart's on deck. Ball four, and Ortiz heads down to first base with a two out walk. Now for every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings where the Sox get a save, CBS Pharmacy will make a donation to Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 commitment once again this season. CBS Pharmacy, the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Also, Martin out to talk to Ryan Tapera, who has just walked David Ortiz. So the Red Sox have Holt at second, Ortiz at first, and two outs here in the seventh inning for Xander Bogarts. Xander does not have a hit today. He's lined out to third into a double play, grounded out to first, and flied out to right. Bogarts with a nine game hitting streak coming into today's game. He started the game a 295 hitter for the Red Sox, creeping up on that 300 mark, but uh, so far in this game, 0 for 3. Remember the first inning, though, hit that line drive very hard to third base when the Red Sox had the bases loaded. And it turned into a double play. What? One fouled off, and it's one and two. One two and Bogarts goes around and strikes out Red Sox strand the pair we're through seven 13 to five Blue Jays.
Clubhouse, catch the encore presentation tonight after our Red Sox coverage. That's the Clubhouse comes to you commercial free, presented by Delta Dental of Massachusetts. 13 to 5, the Blue Jays have the lead over the Red Sox. Dustin Pedroia getting the rest of the game off. Rock Holt moving from first base to second base. And just called up today with Matt Barnes returned to Pawtucket is Travis Shaw who takes over at first base. Heath Embry into the game his fourth appearance without a record 12.46 earned run average. Three strikeouts two walks opponent sitting at 333. As Bautista sends one to Holt knocks it down as time to recover and throws out Bautista for the first out of the eighth inning. And one of the good things about playing second base you have time. For the short throw to make a play like that. He looked a little bit like a hockey goalie on that yep. one, didn't he? Knocking it down, slapping it forward, and covering it himself. I'm not saying playing second base is easy. Yes, you are, Don. <laughs> I'm just saying you have more time to. I could tell the way you were looking at me that you, you've heard me say that before. Yes. And uh, anything that I do, you make sound easy. <laughs> <laughs> One out here in the eighth. Encarnacion has one of the Blue Jays hits. They've got 14 in the game. This was a single to center field. He's been on twice, also walking and scoring a run. The middle of the order has done some damage, but not nearly what the bottom of the order is doing. That's really been the case for the series for the Blue Jays. Of Bottom of the order have been amazing. Eight, nine men to lay Pilar and Goins, and Goins with five RBIs in the game. That's the problem when you, you scout a team like this who you haven't seen in a while, and they come into town, and you look at who's hot, who's not, and they're all hot. And that is a little bit uh, intimidating for pitchers to look at when you've got one through nine swinging the bat well. 13 runs today on 14 hits. Fly ball headed out towards center field and Rusne Castillo overcomes Deaza and look out. That's Rusne will make the catch with Deaza there as well. Two down. Stay tuned following WB Mason Extra Innings Live for Red Sox final presented by Uno's. Adam Power and Steve Lyons will preview the upcoming home and home series with the Atlanta Braves. Two outs here in the eighth in and brings up Chris Colabello. He's had a good day, couple of hits. Single to center, single to right, two for four today. He's also scored three runs. Tommy Lane went a third of an inning, giving up two hits and a run. Did not walk anybody, nor did he strike anybody out. Eduardo Rodriguez on the hook right now for the Red Sox. First bat outing for him in the major leagues. Four and two thirds, eight hits, and nine runs for the Blue Jays today. Walked three, struck out a batter. Rodriguez came into today's game two and zero. Oh. Fly ball headed out towards center field. Rusne Castillo makes his way into left center. And makes the catch that ends the top of the eighth. We head to the bottom of the eighth. 13 to 5, Blue Jays.
Jones. It's the number nine man Ryan Goins in second baseman for the Blue Jays. Really quite a game in this one as a three run home run back in the fourth inning. It was part of a six run inning for the Blue Jays and a two run double in the seventh inning. Two more RBIs for him. And a three run seventh inning for the Blue Jays that inning and a two hit five RBI day for Ryan Goins. On to the bottom of the eighth inning. Defensive change at first. Justin Smoke now in the game at first. The new pitcher, the veteran lefty, Phil Coke. Start of the year with the Chicago Cubs. 16 games without a record. 6.30 earned run average. Opponents well, hitting at 341 against him. Picked up by the Blue Jays. And strike one from Coke. In the air down the left field line and headed foul. Well, tonight at 10 on Nesson Sports Today, we'll have a complete recap from Fenway Park and get you the latest on the NBA Finals. That's tonight on Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. See what know how can do. Pablo Sandoval leading it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two hits, a single, a center in the second, a triple in the fourth inning to center. And grounded out to third base last time up. Sandoval strikes out for the first out here of the bottom of the eighth. Two for four afternoon for Sandoval. Single, triple. Now back-to-back uh, -back outs. That fastball back inside after pitching him away early in the bat. They go back inside with the fastball and get the swing and miss. One out for Alejandro De Aza. 0 for 3 in the game. They has a struck out looking in the second inning, fouled out in the fourth, and then flied out to center in the sixth inning. Chop foul, a ball and a strike to Deaza. Maybe the youngest fan we've seen here at Fenway Park today. Yeah, still smiling. Or teething. One fouled off the home plate umpire, Al Porter. Time for the Toyota play of the game. And the catch by Kevin Pillar coming in from center field to Rob Deaza. Pillar's been terrific offensively and defensively out there in center field. Two two pitch to Deaza and a grounder foul back into the stands and then a roll back into the Red Sox dugout. Aza turns on this and fouls it up into the top deck. Nice catch, two hands. Aza thought about it. He goes around, according to Porter. He didn't even check. Rung him up himself, two down. Back to back strikeouts for Phil Coke. I thought they were going to at least check wow. down at third base because to me, that did not look like a swing. 
But Al Porter, the home plate umpire, making the call. Not asking for help on that one. Two down in the eighth for Rusne Castillo. Castillo has struck out swinging, walked and scored, and grounded out to third base. Bouncing in for a ball one and one. Coke actually started at triple A for the Blue Jays after coming over from the Cubs. Brought up on the 12th of June. And this is grounded back to the mound. Coke's got it. Plants and throws. In time to retire Castillo and the Red Sox go down in order. We head to the ninth, 13 to 5, Toronto. Tomorrow at 6, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. Garrett Austin will have an exclusive interview with Nick Markakis. Thirteen to five, Blue Jays have the lead and a foul ball at the plate that gets Al Porter. Jeff Bianchi taking over at shortstop. Xander Bogarts with the rest of the day off. And the catcher Swihart giving Porter a little bit of time as he heads out there to talk to Heath Hembry. Russell Martin leading it off here in the ninth inning. Martin grounded to short in the second inning. Single to right in the fourth. Doubled to left in the fifth inning and then walked in the seventh. He has scored three times. Look out. On a pitch up and end. Blue Jays coming in, winning their last 10 straight games. Line drive into left field. A base hit for Martin, his third hit of the day. Fourth time he's been on base. So 
Well, the beat goes on for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays offensively. One with a big afternoon. Three hits, three for four on the afternoon. 16, 15, excuse me, total hits for the Blue Jays. Here's Danny Valencia. Look at the Blue Jays' key pickups in. Russell Martin doing the catching now. Josh Donaldson at third base. Really some very key acquisitions for the Blue Jays. On the ground and through into left field, a base hit for Danny Valencia. Up the second goes Russell Martin. Two on, nobody out here in the ninth. Now well, we get to the bottom of the order. Pilar and Goins, and uh, they have had quite a series against the Red Sox. Both six for 13. Four runs scored for Pilar. Nine RBI for Goins, the second baseman. Three doubles and a home run for him. So, I mean, when you're getting production like that out of eight and nine. Your offense is uh, clicking pretty good. Two on, nobody out. There is Kevin Pilar. He will take strike one. Fastball from Hembry. Popped up. Holt and Shaw, and it's the infield fly rule in effect as Shaw makes the catch for the first out of the ninth. Well, tomorrow at 6.30, don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live presented by DCU. Alex Spear will stop by to share his thoughts on the state of the Red Sox. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Two on, one out for Ryan Goins. Two for four day to day. Three run home run, two run double. There's a strike one and one now to Goins. Well, Sembry called up to the big leagues. Uh, Greg Breslow opportunity leave. And Henry getting the call from. Triple A puts on it. Last pitched on Friday going two innings against the Blue Jays. A ground ball possibly two to Brock Holt the second for one. On to first and it is just in time to get going. She does run well. Double plans the top of the ninth 13 to five Blue Jays.
Talk season. Our followers continue to grow every day. Let's see if we can't get to 50,000 before the end of the summer. Follow Nesson on Instagram today. Ezekiel Carrero taking over in left field for the Blue Jays. And you play along here to the bottom of the ninth inning. Phil Koch back out on the mound. The left hander had a 1 2 3 eighth inning with two strikeouts. And Blake Swihart leads it off for Boston in the bottom of the ninth inning. Swihart doubling, or rather singling, back in the fifth inning. Come around to score the second Red Sox run. One for three day today for the Red Sox catcher. Red Sox with five runs, eight hits. And the Blue Jays with 13 runs, 16 hits. On the ground down the third baseline, a foul ball. Blue Jays fan getting that ball. <laughs> Not being well received. Being saluted by Red Sox fans. <laughs> Swihart thought about going. Did he go? No. Mark Ripperger, the first base umpire. A lot of Toronto fans here this weekend yeah. uh, making the trip to Boston from beautiful Toronto. Take a look at Fenway Park. Watch their hot ball club play. Playoff pitch. Outside, a leadoff walk for Blake Swihart. First batter to reach against Phil Coke. Billy Costa and Jenny Johnson want to hear what your favorite dish and your favorite restaurant is. Just send a quick photo or video of your meal and share at Dining Playbook on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Just hashtag Top Nosh. Travis Shaw batting here. Called up today. This was the spot of Dustin Pedroia, who had two hits today. Second career major league stint for Shaw. This is least foul into the seats. Shaw made his major league debut earlier this year. With the Red Sox May 8th, and that was also against Toronto. 0 for 2 with a walk against the Blue Jays on May the 8th. Shaw's a guy who has played 500 career minor league games over parts of five seasons, hitting a 262. Let all Red Sox minor leaguers with 56 home runs from 2012 through 2014. Only fouls it back, still one and two. Rock hole waiting on deck. Nobody out, last of the ninth. Red Sox trailing by eight runs. In the air, foul off to the left out of play. And a fan and fans, a couple of fans have run onto the field here at Fenway. Both have been apprehended.
Now that was just wonderful, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, it just kind of tips off the day. So I feel Coke ready to work here as security has taken both fans off the field. Like Swihart walking to begin this inning. Travis Shaw with a count of one and two. Coke back on top here. Fly ball headed towards left center field. Carrera going back and he'll make the catch. He and Pilar almost collide as Carrera sends it back into the infield. Uh, Carrera, the left fielder, cutting in front of the center fielder to make the grab for the first out of the night. Well, you can see there why they put him in defensively late in games. A uh, very good outfielder, so tremendous speed there and a little courage as he was getting close to running into his center fielder. So Carrera with a fine play, taking extra bases away from Shaw. One down in the ninth inning for Brock Holt. And a single his last time up, a one for four day. Space hit went to left field. Oh, Schultz up in the pen. Pitched earlier in this series for the Blue Jays. Well, jumping back out of the way of a pitch inside as Phil Coke falls behind 2 and 0. Oh. Well, John Gibbons has to be pretty happy about this ball club right now. Blue Jays right now en route to their 11th straight win. Start of the day, a game back of the Yankees and Rays. Yankees are winning today, a 5 3 lead in the eighth inning against Baltimore. Well, Tampa Bay won today against the Chicago White Sox. Rays winning two to one. There's a strike three and one. Ball four in the second walk of the inning, allowed by Phil Coke. With an eight run lead, he has walked two here in the inning. Now that will make John Gibbons very happy as he has to uh, get another guy loose in the bullpen with a very comfortable lead here in the ninth inning. Pete Walker, the pitching coach for the Toronto Blue Jays. More than a number of years now in that capacity. Two on, one away. And here comes Hanley Ramirez. Hanley's been on twice today. Walker and a single, his single to center field. It's also driven in a run now. 33 RBIs on the year for Ramirez. Estrada started this game for the Blue Jays. Five innings, seven hits, five runs. All the Red Sox runs coming in the fifth inning against Estrada. Walk three, struck out three. He did go the minimum to make himself eligible for a victory here today. Phil Coke falling behind, two and zero. Oh.
Fouled off and it's two and one. Sandy Leone has come out on deck here to bat for David Ortiz. Swihart at second base, Holt at first, one out in the ninth. Fouled off to the right, two and two. Well, some pretty good plays in the stands today, that's for sure. Full count. Coke had a one, two, three, eighth inning, but a little different here in the ninth. He has walked two. They get Travis Shaw to fly out to left field, and now a full count to Hanley Ramirez. To right field, Batista moving back, battling the sun, but is able to make the catch out there. Runners do not advance, and Batista really battling the sun out there in right field, but he makes the grab two down. I will look right out in that direction, and you'll see where it, pretty much what Batista's battling right there, but he's able to make the catch. He's got the shades on, he turns his head right at the last minute as he. Apparently lost to the sun, but it did end up in the glove. So here's Sandy Leon pinch hitting for David Ortiz. We have two outs in the ninth inning. Leon a 170 hitter, no homers, and two runs batted in. Two on, two down here in the ninth. And Leon takes strike one. This time, Coke starting off ahead. 37 pitches for the veteran left hander since coming into this game. There is strike two. And to the count with two down here in the ninth. Outside for ball one. Jeff Bianchi on deck for Boston with two down here in the ninth inning. Blake Swihart at second, Brock Holt at first. Swing it a foul that gets Russell Martin. And Marl Rick Porcello going for the Red Sox matched up against Williams Perez, right hander for the Atlanta Braves in the first of two. On the ground by the mound. Goins, the second baseman, will go to first, and that's the ball game. That's the series. Blue Jays come in and sweep the Red Sox in a three game series. Toronto has won 11 in a row, while the Red Sox have now lost six in a row. Another very difficult day for the Red Sox. Blue Jays, 13 runs and 16 hits. And another tough day, Adam Pellerin.